also we're going to be kind of getting this 1999 Eurovan up and running for the first time in about five years. I have absolutely no clue what's wrong with this car, but we're going to dive into it and see if we can get it started. Stay tuned. So if you guys missed the other episode on this thing when we went and got it and brought it home, I'll put a link right here and you can just tap on that. But a little bit of the backstory, I was given this car for free and uh, I have no clue what what's wrong with it or why it was taken off the road. I checked the oil the other day and there was nothing on the stick. So I'm hoping that oil level is just like right below the stick. I'm about to uh, drain the oil and see how it looks hopefully it's got some in there so i think that's what i'm gonna do first and then we will pull out the fuel pump and siphon the gas out of the fuel tank i'll show you guys how to do that because this thing's been off the road for about five years so before we try to start it i want some fresh gas in there fresh oil and uh see what happens okay so we got that belly pan off got the car jacked up i was getting ready to drain the oil and look what I found. So that belt completely sheared off. You can see it's just parts of the belt everywhere. So I think we're going to need a new belt, whatever this thing is, to get this thing up and running. Okay, guys, check it out. So that's what's left of the serpentine belt. Uh, not exactly sure how that happened, but that's gone. Um, this is what's left of the uh, idler pulley. Um, this basically like gives gives the belt tension. It rides off the tensioner. Uh, let me show you guys kind of. I'm currently trying to get off this uh, idler pulley right up there. Um, it's all shredded and gone. It takes a. Uh, 15 millimeter and um, it's reverse thread. So I'm gonna get that off quick and I'll show you guys what that looks like. Okay, we got that popped off. Check out that bearing, it's seen better days. So I think this bearing overheated and then uh, kind of tore this apart and then, and then the belt got chewed up. That was the end of that. You can see this is part of the bearing, I think. So I'm gonna run over to the store, see if I can pick up a new idler pulley and then also a belt and hopefully we get one that fits uh, I'm trying to just do this as cheaply and fast as possible to see if we can get this thing running please be oil in this thing oh yeah There we go. Check it out. That filter hasn't been changed in a, just a little bit of time. Um, we got our new filter right here. Check out the difference. This is just like the cheapest one at the auto parts store. It also comes with a little rubber uh, O-ring that you wanna replace. It goes around this outside of the oil filter. And uh, I think I'm gonna get this back in. Time to fill her up. I'm using 5W30. This is just some um, some free oil I got at a garage sale, um, but it'll do for right now. So I think this thing takes about six quarts, maybe a little bit less than six. So I'll start with four, and then well, you can probably start with five quarts, and then start checking the dipstick. Now that we got that oil drained. Um, I want to siphon the gas out of the tank and to do that we got to pull out this driver's seat pull up some of the carpet maybe get the shifter out of our way and uh, we should have access to the gas tank right below there so I'm gonna get some of that stuff out of the way and then I'll bring you guys back boom got the seat out basically all you got to do is pop off this front cover undo a couple clips and then you got four 15 millimeters that uh, you just got to remove 
and um, then your seats out so that was pretty easy now um, we got to get this out of our way and lift up some of this carpet more stuff out of our way so these plastics that go over this you just pull them up they come off easy then to get this off um, there's a small little screw that goes right there so you got to remove that and then you can pull that off this piece goes on next and it just yanks up um, then you got three phillips screws that hold this on and then there's this little clip that you gotta detach and then that all comes out so now we should be able to pull up that carpet and get good access to the fuel tank okay that was dumb of me i removed the shifter thingy and you actually don't need to do that um unless you do have to do that if you want to pull up all the carpet but i'm just going to cut see how i just cut this little patch right here this is going to be covered by this floor mat anyway so it's not like you're going to see that so you might as well just cut that otherwise you got to pull that seat out you got to undo the vents back here and then uh, then you could fold the carpet all the way up but i don't see the point in doing all that when you can just cut it and get access so um I think we got to remove this pull that up and out of our way three 13 millimeters that hold this bracket on you can just push this off to your side and then we have access to this so let's just get those zipped off and then get to the fuel pump okay there we go we got the fuel lines off what you want to do is um, kind of go back and forth like this to break them loose and then slowly bring them off and I went with this one first and this one was pressurized because this one is going up to the engine. And so you want to like just break it loose and then get it right down to the end and then just kind of gently let some air out and some, some fuel will squirt out. But so just have like a rag or something right there, um, but not too much will come out. Then you just undo this clip and now we're ready to get the top of this off you need this tool you can get it at AutoZone, and um, it hooks on like this you tighten these things down and then you just take your ratchet and just and just twist this thing off so let me get that off quick and we'll start siphoning this gas out check it out that's some old gas down there so I'm going to get my little pump and start pumping that gas out. Took a quick sample of that gas and no, that's not orange Gatorade. Uh, that's the gas that was in the tank. So yeah, that's, that's pretty old fuel right there. Man, I could sure go for some Arizona right now. Ta Just kidding. This is uh, gasoline, so don't want to drink that. Anyways, enough with the jokes. Let's get that fuel filter out. We're underneath the car right below the driver's seat. Um, you can see it's like right behind the cross member right here. And this is your fuel filter. So you're just gonna take out this one screw right here. And then this should pop free. Now let's just get those cracked loose. There's probably gonna be a little bit of gas that comes out, so have have a little pan to catch that. And uh, make sure you have glasses on and gloves. Okay, we got that fuel filter out. Now what I wanna do is disconnect the fuel line up at the injector or like at the fuel rail and uh, remove that so that we can blow air from the fuel filter all the way up to the engine to make sure we get all that bad gas out of the line and um, so these are your two uh, fuel lines that go to the fuel fuel rails and uh, this bottom one is your pressure one which is basically your in and then this top one it's blue um, is the one that's your return line so I'm just gonna pop off this black one down here and then uh, we will um, 
get some pressurized air and blow through the system and hopefully some of that gas comes out of here then we'll get that new fuel filter popped back on okay this one should be the outline facing the back of the car so i'm just going to hit this a couple of times and see if it blows any fuel up to the front so i had this bottle in there and there's no fuel in there there is a little bit of junk though so maybe that line didn't have anything in it hopefully that doesn't mean like the fuel pumps bad in this thing that's actually why i'm not gonna put the seat in until we try to start it because if the fuel pumps bad then um we already got it basically out so um there's no gas in the line so we have a clean system let's get back under the car and uh put that new filter in there we go we got that new filter on um make sure that you have this in the correct way um this is your in and this is your out uh the filter only goes on like one way you can see it says out right here sometimes it has an arrow make sure that arrow is pointing towards the back of the car Otherwise, you'll have the filter on the wrong way. So this is your out, this is your in. Okay, we got the jumper pack hooked up. Got some fresh fuel in it. Let's turn this thing on and see what happens. Now, since we just uh, let all the pressure out of the lines, we're gonna have to turn it on and then turn it off. Oops. How do I turn those things off? There we go. Okay, so it says 180,000, so a little bit more mileage than I thought. I don't see any leaks down here. Let's turn it off. Turn it back on. I'm just going to do this a couple times. And I think it supposed to build pressure back up and then we'll try to start it okay let's try to start this thing up first time in about five years Oops. might not have enough battery it seems like uh, a jumper pack might not work good enough I think we gotta go get a battery. That thing's not powerful enough. Okay, we got a new battery. Let's see what happens. Oh, it was trying. Maybe it's, maybe the fuel isn't quite up there yet. I saw something where you're supposed to like turn it to the on position and then that turns on the fuel pump and then it will stop. So you do it like five times. But well, let's see what happens. Give it some gas maybe. Let's see. Yeah, let's problem solve really quick. Yeah, let's try this again. Must just not be getting enough fuel up front.
have to drown it. Boom, let's go. Oh, I hear something uh, something sizzling down there. It's probably just the mice. The mice or the... I did see a lot of mice for floating up. Yeah. Must be the mouse poop or something. Boom. So uh, now I just got to wait for that serpentine belt, that idler pulley, because those things uh, control the power steering, the alternator water pump stuff like that so we really shouldn't run it too long without that but uh let's try to start this thing up one more time this is live Sounds pretty good, I think. Might have a slight miss. Putting away. Has a check engine light on, but hopefully that's just because, um, probably just because that alternator is not hooked up and running. But it's blowing air and everything, so glad we drained the fuel. And uh, glad that fuel pump wasn't bad because those things are like 250 bucks. Sweet. Okay, we got our belts, so I'm just gonna clean off these pulleys really quick. Um, they have a bunch of like old belt stuck in these grooves, so we want that clean for the new belt. Wow, that was a lot of work. You can see all of the scraps that came off. I actually had to use this pick and go around every single line on each of these pulleys because it was so bad and stuck on there. And then I actually took the wire brush um, and got them clean. So I think we're looking good. Up there, I got that surface nice and clean. It was corroded. You want to make sure that's clean because that's what your bearings are going to be uh, riding on. Man, that alternator is sure crusty. Highly doubt that thing works. It was seized up and I just cranked it loose. But we're just going to rotate that around a couple times. Hopefully get it spinning a little bit easier can hear how crunchy it is so that's probably not that good but as long as it spins we'll be fine for now okay i've started putting new parts on so this is the idler pulley that i went with um, i bought both of these parts on uh, rockauto.com those are both the part numbers this is for the belt that i bought i think it was like 40 bucks for the belt and like 15 bucks for the the pulley um so what you got to do is uh put your pulley on first it's reverse thread remember that and um it should be torqued down to about 30 foot pounds okay so once you get that on then you want to can you guys see that so i got i got an m8 
by 1.25 um, times like 80. That's like the length. So you want to go buy one of those bolts and then you're gonna run that in. That's the tensioner down there. And what that will do is it'll take the tension off the, off the tensioner. And that way you can, you can get your belt on. So let me try to get a good angle of how this belt is orientated. So that's how the belt should go on, I think. There's no videos on how it goes on, so I think I got it on, right? We're about to find out. But, um, so now that I got the belt slipped on, I'm gonna go take that tensioner bolt out, and then this should all be nice and tight. So let me go do that quick. There we go, the belt is on nice and tight. So that was a pretty easy install. Just took extra long because our belt sheared off and got stuck in all the grooves and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, that's pretty easy. So hopefully that helps someone else because the videos weren't very good on how to do this. So uh, let's get up in the car and see if this thing fires up. Okay, here we go. We got the belt on and everything. So let's start this thing up. See how it sounds. It's just some dust that popped out right when you started the car. You sure? Yeah. Dust and uh, it definitely smells like something burning. I think it must be that alternator down there. Because it was seized up. And so. I guess we will just run it and see what happens, right? Do you smell that though? It smells like a like yeah. hot electrical or Just something. like mouse poops. Well, take that battery pack off. <clears throat> Start number two. We're just gonna full send it. If something blows up, then oh well. Probably need to put some new spark plugs in this thing. Let's see, turn on the air. Oh yeah, it's blowing cold air too. So the air conditioning's working, so that's nice. 
because a lot of times a lot of times the air conditioning uh, doesn't work in these things so that means uh, that belts working good air conditioning's working she's turning on the wipers for some reason power steering felt good too turn it what's that what are those lights still has the engine light on but yeah this power steering's working nice so that means that works looks like we're almost out of gas probably better fill this thing up and then maybe we'll try to take it out for a drive i gotta quickly uh put the shifter thing back on and then uh fill this thing up with gas and see if it moves we don't even know if this transmission works so let's test that out next Okay, we got that shifter back in, got the seat bolted down. So let's start this thing up. Whoops. Um. Let's see, I wanna see if the alternator is charging. I don't know if you can test the alternator like you can on an old car where you can just see if let's see if we can do this I don't work on old cars so I'm not sure hey can you rev the engine rev the engine for me not a lot just a little bit Go up a little bit more. Yeah, that's good. Seems like it's going up, so. And then it drops back down, so I think we're good. We'll bring the jumper pack just in case. I think we're gonna go drive over, fill this thing up with some more gas because it's on empty. Um, and let's see how this thing drives. Let's hope we make it back. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Whoa, what the fuck was that? Not even sure if the brake works. Well, it's just back a little up bit and squishy. Back up and check it. Here, let me film it first person filming whoops emergency brakes on whoopsies okay let's put this thing into drive went into the gear so that's a good start oh we gotta watch the temperature make sure Jeez. here we go we're off I'll get you this Wow, this thing drives so high. Or <laughs> Okay, we shifted. This thing sits so high up, that's crazy. Let's test out the brakes. The brakes are a little bit squishy. This thing sits so high, oh my gosh. Lights. It has the lights on already. What side's the gas tank on that side? Seems pretty smooth, I don't know. Not sure why the check engine light's on. Brakes definitely need to get bled or something. No, they don't need to get bled. Yeah, they're they're pretty soft. Just a little brake fluid. A little brake fluid will fix it, right? Might just be how it is. I'll drive it home. Wow, this thing drives good. Just waiting for something to blow up. Okay, yeah, let's 
let's go fill this thing up. Whoa. Suspension is. <laughs> right there, it's halfway. It's halfway. It's right there. Let's see those are so gross, dude. Ugh, I want to even put that seatbelt on. <laughs> uh, the door doesn't open. Fuck. Turn the car on. What the hell? <laughs> Why is my door not open? Nope. Door doesn't open. And, uh, <laughs> let's see. There we go. Sorry, this is a new car, so. Not quite. Not quite sure how this thing works yet. Oh, the you got the fuel cap off? I thought, yep. I thought it had a lock. Okay. We'll just do... Uh, well, it does, but it was unlocked. <laughs> okay. We'll just do... Uh, he's got to have a price, so like... Uh, 20 bucks. 20 bucks. We'll just do 20 bucks. A regular. Okay, let's get this inside cleaned up. As you can see, it is super dirty. Um, I think my dad's noticed this the other day, but the seat belts are just kicked on. I don't know if that's mold or, I don't know, mouse pee or something, but check out that carpet. Just all kinds of stuff on it. Seat belts. Super nasty. So what I'm going to start by doing is, uh, just vacuuming everything out. And then I have like this extractor vacuum that uh, uses water and and it sucks out all the nasty stuff in the carpet. So that should be pretty satisfying. And uh, we'll see if that can bring back this carpet a little bit. Well, we did something. We got all the seats out. And so we have super good access to getting this thing clean. I went ahead and vacuumed everything to get all the big stuff out. Now we can just work on trying to get some of these stains out of the carpet, get it smelling a little bit better in here. So what I'm gonna start off by doing is using some of this uh, Folex carpet cleaner and just spraying it down. Then we're gonna agitate it with a brush. Now we're gonna take our extractor. This is the one I'm using. I um, actually was able to rent this from Home Depot. It was like 25 bucks for 24 hours. So that seemed like a really good deal to me. Anyways, uh, I've never used one of these. So we're gonna give it a shot and see how well it works. There we go guys, so that took about five minutes. You can see the uh, before and after right there. I mean, it's not perfect, but you're not gonna be able to get it perfect. You know, you see those videos and the people bring the stuff back and it looks perfect, but I mean, maybe with a lot of time, but um, yeah, so this thing's definitely working. I'm gonna keep on going um, and uh, see how well this cleans up. 